Well, I did something I thought I would never do. I moved to Nashville, sort of. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. This video is just gonna be a little personal update about some big life moves I have made. And I don't wanna ever be the kind of YouTuber that does too many personal updates. I feel like it's a classic mistake when you start to think, wow, people are really here for me rather than them tuning in for this subject that you cover. I, I generally do keep it pretty focused on country music, but today it is kind of about me and the update is related to country music too. So I just wanted to catch up. So I am currently in Nashville, Tennessee, Music City. I am staying in the townhouse right now of one of my friend's parents. They are out of town for a few weeks and they said, hey, if this would be a helpful place to kind of make your home base as you go and look at apartments and figure out where you're actually gonna move, you're welcome to use it for those few weeks. So I took him up on the offer and here I am. This will not be my final location, but I have brought me and a lot of my stuff down to Nashville, Tennessee. Now for the past eight years, I've lived in Charlottesville, Virginia. And for about three and a half years before that, I lived in New York City. And for a lot of that time, everyone has said, oh, are you just gonna go to Nashville? And I've always really resisted that, but here I am. And why did I make the move? Well, first off, it's not because I got some big new job offer or there is some opportunity that means I have to be down here. Those things could be down the road, but there's nothing on the table right now that means I need to be here. I chose to come here practically for the sake of career. I've been making videos somewhat regularly about country music here on the channel for about five and a half years now. And for just over three years now, I have been full time. And while I am proud of myself for the fact that I've paid all my bills, I've kept the channel running. Obviously, consistency isn't my strong suit, but in the long run, I've been rather consistent with this. I have never done something for so long or held a job for that long in my life. Uh, at the same time as I'm proud of that, I also am feeling like, man, I think I've kind of scaled as big as I know how to scale by myself. Now, there are individuals and YouTubers that are so much better at scaling than me. I think I've had to accept over the past couple years that I really approach my channel artistically. I can't just make myself make a video about every single album and just crank it out. I don't think of myself that way. If I don't feel it in my soul, what I wanna say, I just simply won't get on camera and say it. And that's cool, but it's also a drawback because I don't really have a practical structure that is helping me uh, create content with some regularity, please the audience with that kind of regularity. And that makes me bummed because I wish I could be that person. I wish I were more motivated by money and hustle and that's just not really how I think. Because I do want this channel to be big and popular and a hub of good country music conversation that kind of enriches country music culture because it's all I got to show for in life. You're like, I don't own a house I can brag about. I don't have a family. Like, I got this. This is my one thing and I want it to be good and uh, I know it could be better, but I'm not really sure I know how to get it there by myself. On top of that, there is a degree of tedium and loneliness that is part of the YouTube journey. And I know no one wants to hear a YouTuber whine about that kind of thing. And I recognize how privileged of a position I'm in. But when I just close my eyes and think, man, do I want to spend another three years sitting alone in my house, kind of trying to write videos, listen to music, edit videos, post them, and, and you're by yourself all day just sitting in your room? The answer is no. Like, that doesn't feel good for me. I just sort of have a suspicion that that is bad for the soul. And... I don't want that. I want to learn how to work with others again, although I am not eager to go into the same sort of media pools that I already did a decade ago. Like I have my own platform. That's cool. But how do I now bring other people into it to kind of help and to work with and to bounce stuff off of? And, you know, how do I build? As long as I've been in this kind of weird influencer space in life, I've just assumed no one would want to work with me. Uh, I just kind of imagine everyone hates me. That's like how I, it's just what I assume. When I walk in a room, I'm like, oh, probably everyone doesn't like that guy. That's the self-absorbed YouTuber that thinks his opinion matters. But I, I've had a few trips down to Nashville over the past six months for some job opportunities that didn't work out. And when I was here at the country radio seminar, 
I was especially intimidated to be in that room because I was like, why would anyone in radio have anything nice to say about me? I constantly point out what I view as some corruption within that system. And in fact, it was such the opposite. Just a lot of people, probably there were some people that disliked me, but a lot more people came up and said like, dude, I love what you do. I couldn't say that stuff. I appreciate that you say it. And it was a really interesting experience for me to be there, you know, six months ago and kind of realize my antenna are a little off. My perception of myself is not necessarily the perception that others have of me. And even if I don't feel that, I can logically know that. And as I sort of processed, I realized, man, there are some people that are talented and creative. They're trying to hire me. There's other creative people that like me. Maybe there are people that would want to work with me. And maybe there's not, we'll have to see, but I moved here on a kind of gut feeling that maybe I can find a couple other people to sort of work with or help or something. I love being managed personally. I don't love being my own boss at all. I also will not say what anyone tells me to say, but at the same time, I do well when there is sort of some supportive structure around me. And so I'm here hoping to find some kind of management, some kind of like systems, because I'm pretty bad at delegating, at hiring an editor. Again, when I try to hire people, the only thought that goes through my head is, oh, I'm probably ruining their life by making them work for me. And just some good business mentors in my life have said, Grady, that's not reality. That's not true. So I don't know. I'm just trying to trust them. I don't really know what opportunities will or won't present themselves while I'm here, whether it's a podcast or a show. There's been discussions about all of those sorts of things, but I just want to try. I think I would always wonder when I'm older, man, if when you really had momentum, you had gone to the big city, would it have paid off? Would you have been able to reach some higher echelon? I don't know if you've ever watched the show Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. That show's so good. But this most recent season, I really related to Midge at the very end of the season, and I won't give it away, but someone tells her, you know, there's a limited window in this business, and you don't want to miss that window while it's open. And that really resonated with me. That was kind of my tipping point, actually, to say, I think I need to go to the city and find out if there's something to be done with this platform. Because I think I'm craving some sort of purpose. I don't really feel happy, but I don't ever expect to. Like, I can live without happiness, but I don't think I could live without like a sense of purpose. And that's a little bit where I'm at. I feel a little bit adrift or uh, just wondering, you know, like, what am I here for? What am I doing? I don't have like a bigger quest or feel wrapped up in something larger than myself. And so I, I am lacking, I know, a sufficient sense of purpose. And I, I just needed a challenge a little bit. Part of this move really is almost like when I'm playing pool and I don't have a good shot, I just hit the, pool, the cue ball as hard as I can and it breaks up all the balls. That seems better than feeling stuck, which is kind of how I was starting to feel in Charlottesville. And I love my friends and, and miss them um, and loved my time there for the most part. But I also know I need some challenge and to try something new. And I think that Nashville does have just an abundance of creative, hustling people that understand how to work with other creative people. And I... I, I want to be around that. It's like I've forgotten how to work with others a little bit and I don't want that to be the whole rest of my life. And if it all sucks and if it all fails and if uh, none of this works, I'm giving it like a year, I'm just going to move to Florida. <laughs> I've been curious about moving to Florida for a while, but I'm like, you know what? If, if this all goes terribly wrong, let's just get a move on. Because even though I think there are so many opportunities and so much good here in Nashville, I also feel like there are drawbacks to being here. And I do have some very real fears about being this close to the industry that I talk about for a living. Because I actually think distance gives you a really honest perspective. And even in these past couple weeks, I've gone to some fancy showcase on the rooftop of the Virgin Hotel and there's like a pool and all these fancy drinks. You can go to a show and see like Gabe Lee and Jesse Daniel and it's like, oh, those are some record executives sitting over yonder. I mean, I ran into Joey Moy at a bar. <laughs> we even talked about Snap Tracks 
a little bit. All that stuff is super cool. It's super cool. But at the same time, I am hesitant to fly too close to the sun. I don't want to fall into the trap of what I often call toxic positivity, where everyone says, you know, I just want everyone to win. I think like, even if that song's not my style, it could be their style and that's cool. Like that's how a lot of people around here talk. It's actually a quite appealing attitude to be around, but at the same time, I don't think it's conducive for good discussions in media. I think like it helps to have a little edge and it helps to have uh, the ability to feel like you can speak in an unguarded manner. And my suspicion would be that that is easily compromised by just being in proximity and becoming friendly with people in the industry. Because that definitely was my experience in media. I used to work in kind of reporting the box office and the film industry. And if you wanted to say something, you know, obvious, like John Carter bombed at the box office, you would get a small army of publicists that would call and say very manipulative things like, hey, you know, like, I know we discussed that this movie was going to do this at the box office this weekend. And honestly, if you write what you're saying, and you don't change that language, heads are going to roll at Disney and that blood will be on your hands. And when I was freaking 22, 23 years old, I didn't know how to handle that or understand how much I was being manipulated. But there is an insidious relationship that exists between, you know, publicity and marketing departments and the media. And I am much less willing than a lot of people to just go along with that. And I will say music publicists seem to be a lot more honest than movie publicists. But it's the same idea. And it leads me to question, well, when everyone says, oh, it would be great to take you out to lunch. Let me get you a coffee. We should get a drink. I can tell you about what I'm working on. That's nice. It's great to feel important and have things bought for you. I won't lie. But at the same time, it does feel, you know, it's a bit conditional. Like, what is the point of this? Except perhaps to you know, massage the narrative later on. And I'm aware of that. I think I have proven to myself by having some degree of, you know, friendship with a few stars and still, I think, reviewing their albums honestly and saying things that it like pains me a little bit to say. I think I've proven to myself that I have enough integrity to actually continue to say what I think. But if I feel like I can't actually do that, I'll move. Like, I don't want to become a dishonest person. And the nature of living in a place is you start to become a little bit like the people there. I feel like I remember when I lived in Brooklyn and I had, I was like the square from Virginia. But after a couple of years, you're like, oh, I want like the crazy Macklemore haircut because that's what everyone else was doing. So y'all can keep me honest. I know you always do. Sometimes your theories on me are definitely wrong. But for the most part, I feel very understood by the audience and I think you probably understand everything I'm saying. I don't really know what the future has in store, but I'm excited for it. Nervous, excited. I don't know. Got a little homesick today, but this is just a little personal update. Hope you enjoyed it. That's all. Bye.